to order. The time is nine o'clock. Uh, we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, meetings are being audio and video recorded. Please silence your cell phone and masks and hand sanitizer are available. Are there any public comments? Yes. You please come up to the microphone. Yeah, we we it's a, it makes a huge difference when people are on the microphone. Right, you yeah. can't hear anything. You need to stand you, up, up to the microphone. microphone. Yeah, sorry, sorry Dan. Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My name is Sam Klein. I live at fourteen Rosebush Court in Suncroft Village, and I'm going to defer to item number five. The Stonecroft Village deed for open space lot 215. When you bring that up for discussion. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. First item for discussion is Act 537. Um, Joel Baldas from Hydroterra Professionals is working on a draft milestone schedule and a special study. Uh, the geotech soil borings had started on July 18th, and that's why, if anyone's watching this, we see. Uh, the men working signs over on Canal Road. Uh, at last month's meeting, Hydroterra professionals were appointed as the alternate SEO and managers of the sewer management program. Uh, the WSA agreement is still being drafted. Um, Joe, did you have any comments for us remotely? He's on mute. Um, can we unmute him? I think he has to unmute. Oh, Joe, can you unmute? Sorry him? about that. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's okay. I it's always okay. do that. Yeah. Um, uh, so where was I? Back up. Yeah, I guess there's a couple things I'd like to point out on the engineer's report if we can take a little bit of time uh, because I think there's some uh, good news and, and uh, maybe not so good news, but at any rate, uh, we did prepare a revised schedule uh, for DEP, um, and I think that uh, hopefully everybody has had a chance to review that, but if not, uh, you'll note that there are actually two parts to that. Um, there's essentially a table, and then there's a Gantt chart that'll show you uh, just basically how we're proceeding through the project. You can see that there's there, uh, if you have the documents in front of you, I know the other two are, are remote, but uh, Irene, if you, do you have the uh, documents in front of you? I can't really see what's going on in there. But. Yeah, yeah, I have them right here. Okay, yeah, so there's, uh, there's a, a Gantt chart there that kind of shows you how to, we're going through the flow of the project. You can see up top, we're talking about completing the survey and geotechnical stuff, and then the study and going down through and submittal of the study to DEP. And then there's some you know, time allotted in there for uh, securing grants for the design and then securing grants for project construction. Um, but then you can see the final award complete construction date down there in the bottom right. And, uh, you know, there is some room, room to move in there, I think. But, you know, I'd like to get uh, the supervisor's opinion. If you want to give me a call and talk about it, that's fine. Um, I think this is on target. Uh, and Kimberly has some news to report on uh, some grants, uh, uh, additional grants that may be available. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kimberly, too. Yes, absolutely. I'm Kimberly DeRosa with Hydroterra Professionals. Um, we have two significant grant opportunities that are opening for us. So the Berks County uh, Category 4 LSA program, the local share account grant that we were successful with, at least in a partial amount last round, is reopened. Um, the Commonwealth Finance Authority had their meeting on the 18th. And they finally posted the updated requirements yesterday. And um, luckily, I believe the township is in a good place to apply again this year. Um, and we'd be applying on behalf of the design of the project. 
And then even more exciting, the Berks County LSA statewide program is going to be opening in September. And so we'll have through November to apply for even more funds on behalf of the project. I'm excited about the potential for the statewide program because we could apply for a grant up to $1 million worth of project costs. Now, again, it's, it's not a guarantee, but I think we're in a very strong place um, based on what we've written in the past. And Joe and I are really um, well-versed in the project needs and requirements. Um, it would be a streamlined process to apply to both with the board's approval. So I would hope that um, for the Thursday Board of Supervisors meeting, if the board would consider approving us to apply for Absolutely. the Berks County Category 4 program, because that due date is first, that is due September 30th. So for us to get everything in well ahead of time, that would be great to have approval. The statewide program does not open until September 1st. So if it's not possible to have that on the checklist for this Thursday's Board of Supervisors, um, it wouldn't it wouldn't be terrible, yeah. but also yeah. if we could just get it rolling, then I'd be able to start making my calls, um, seeing what the funding thresholds really are. Because last time when we inquired for the Berks County Category 4 program, I do think that was a huge help establishing that contact and just understanding how much funding we should realistically ask for. Um, but overall, I think these are, are great opportunities, and I'm sure Joe can hop in if you would like and explain further. No, I, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, and thank you again so much for all the work that you do. Joe's yeah. back. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that shouldn't be a problem to get that on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you both very much. All right, on to the next item. Uh, the, and forgive me, I know I talk fast. If you think I'm talking too fast, please slow me down, okay? Um, Mangot Holding Tank Agreement and Escrow. Uh, Attorney McFarlane has uh, created a draft of the Holding Tank Release Agreement. He suggested that we deduct his bill from the total escrow amount. And for those of you that aren't familiar, um, they were planning on subdividing the property. They did not do that. And so we currently have an escrow account for the holding tank that would have gone with the divided property. So. We're just going to wait for uh, the final bill, again, just as, as the statement said, deduct that from his uh, agreements as long as everything goes through. And uh, I don't see any problems with that. I don't know. Jim, do you have any comments on that? No. All right, no, Jim, just hold, hold on tight for the next issue. All right. This is a pretty sore subject with everyone in town. Uh, the Eagle disposal issues, um, we've experienced a lot of issues with Eagle not picking up the trash and recycling on our scheduled days. Um, again, Attorney McFarland Collin was going to look over the contract. And so um, the, the question is, is, what's the next step to take? And so we need good feedback from, from the solicitor as to what we should be doing. There's not a built-in remedy under the contract. Um, but certainly we did not receive adequate notice from them. We didn't receive phone calls about the delay until for the most part after the fact. Um, we appreciate our residents being very patient and for the most part being polite when calling into the office. Um, uh, it is stressful on us when people do call in the office and we are aware of the issues. When you do, please have kind consideration for the people that are answering the phone. Um, we're not the ones to blame. We're trying to remedy the situation. I just ask that you be kind to anyone that answers the phone and tries to help address the problem. So anything further from you, Jim? I keep on looking at the screen like he's here. No, obviously, yeah. yeah. Obviously, I'm not real happy with the situation, but like you said, there's <clears throat> it may be out of our control right now, and Colin's going to have to look into it for us. Yes, yes. I mean, we, we this this is a problem. It has affected all of us, and uh, uh, there, there's an aspect of health and safety uh, with trash sitting out. Um, so this isn't something that we're sitting on. This is something that, from the first instance, we were all on top of it. So I just want to reassure everyone within the community that um, we're trying to do what we can with this. Of course, there's the constraints of a contract. Um, and in order to get a new service, we'd have to go through a bidding process, an advertising process, et cetera. So this isn't something that could be remedied overnight, within a week, or even a month. It's something that would be a very step-by-step -step process because there's a contract in place and legal implications. So 
uh, Dan, you had a comment if you have the comment. Yeah. yeah, microphone, please. Yeah, yeah. You're not in an isolated situation. Right, and we're, we're well aware of that. Experience is yeah. the same thing. Yeah. We have hurt trash out. Yeah. It's not picked up. Call, we're short manpower. Yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, the big thing is manpower. Yes. And yes. that's what constitutes the pickup and not pickup. So yes. it happens to us just as frequently with our trash collection company as it does with yours, which is a totally different company. Yeah. So I, I think I think part of the issue for us is is a courtesy call and a courtesy call to the yeah. residents. Yeah, or an email. And and often enough, there isn't one or, or there's one that's a few days late. And, and again, that's part of the contract. We're supposed to receive a notification within 24 hours and we haven't. So we go through this same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so so that uh, leads me on to the next uh, item, which is robocalling and emergency alerts. Um, we received quotes from Civic Ready and OnSol Code Red Alerting. Um, do you ladies have that information? I don't have those numbers in front of me. That's okay. If you could tell me what was, um, was there much of a price difference? No. Okay. Um, Civic Ready was a little bit higher, but they're, they have our, they're through okay. Civic Plus. Which so is that's, our that's the current, our, what our website is. is yeah. On. Okay. And I know we had, um, Okay. Yeah. And I, if I recall looking at the numbers quickly, the numbers were fairly close. The, it would be easier to go through Civic Ready because we already are through, we have them through our website. And I think we had talked about, um, that's okay. Just the proposal is a proposal. Okay. So everything is, it's, it's fairly close then. Thank you. Um, I know we had talked about putting together a newsletter so that we could send residents a small card um, with their information, whether they wanted to be contacted via phone or text message or email. And so I think part of that would include, um, uh, uh, would be participation in the robo calling. So um, when we did the mailer for um, the last, uh, the on lot, who did we use? Did we use JDM or did we use like Little Mountain Printing? We had letters copied to JDM. Okay. I put stuff in the envelope. Okay. Okay. So I guess we can, uh, I could, I can, a little mountain printing. They did, our, they did the police tickets for us. So we could go yeah. around and get some pricing if we yeah, could, pricing. yeah. If we could put together a newsletter, Jim, if there's anything in particular you, you wanted in a newsletter, there's a couple of issues we know uh, that we wanted to kind of put a one or two liner about, but robo calling and putting in a card where residents can fill out their name, address, phone number, which method they would prefer to be called, email address, and return envelope with it. Let them put the stamp on it. Um, this way we can fill a database and we can actually keep those cards in a file box. I feel like, like I'm back in elementary school. Um, but we'd have a good contact list and the people that would want to be robocalled. So in, in essence, it would solve the problem that we're having with, with the lack of robocalling from trash collection, but also it would be very important for road closings um, other uh, like weather related emergencies and anything that would be so critical, we'd have that option to notify individuals about emergent and urgent situations. So I think it would be a big plus. Um, I guess we'll have to, once uh, Peter's able to join us or at the next meeting, do we want this as a, a votable item? Okay, so excellent. That's, that's fine, that's fine. Thank you, thank you. So um, I guess in, in that same breath, if we could um, figure out what we'd want to put together in a uh, brief newsletter, one page thing. Um, yeah, that's what I figured, that's what I figured. So we could we could get that done, get it to print, get it out and get this on board already. So once we've approved it, we have the information, we can move forward. So yeah, yeah, because it, it, it kind of goes hands in hands with yeah. this a little bit. So because we can't get it out unless or until we have everyone's phone number. If you're going to do a newsletter, we should. Yes. I just, uh, yes. I, yes. I added yes. that in my drive. Yeah. yeah. Is that part of it, uh, the SEO on here, like as far as? Who's so going to be doing the inspections? The pumpers. 
systems well, design, the, pumpers. the pumpers. Okay, so that was resolved for last meeting then. Um, I guess part of the newsletter, do we have to let the residents know there's been a brief pause? Because we have to collect the information from the pumpers too, don't we? Well, we were going to send, I mean, you didn't make a decision, but there right. was discussion about sending pumpers, getting a list of pumpers and sending them okay. a letter saying, this is how we're going to do it now. Yeah. I've had several phone calls. Okay. There are people who need inspections by the end of the year. And I've been telling them if you can hold off and right. you don't need a pump, let can you wait just until we get this process worked out? Yeah. I mean, we have to give exception for the delay. It was something that was is not within our right. control. And I apologize because I missed half of the last meeting. I and I didn't watch oh, the yeah. video. I apologize. Yeah, I just want to say yep. with the um pumpers doing inspections, we need to revise the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I think that's yep. that's primary. And I have that in the sewer engineers report as well, because once we have that approved in the ordinance, then everything's going to fall into place. We can contact the local pumpers. And I know Hydrotero would be, you know, thrilled to assist with that and to offset, because um, that's our goal is to offset as much admin as possible to get this restarted. And again, I, this is a process where nobody could avoid the, no. the pause. Yeah, no, no one yeah. could have foreseen this. And and I think uh, everyone, everyone can be patient. And you know, we're going to just move along and do the best that we can. So there just needs yeah. to be some discussion on Thursday about people who are due by the end of the year because they had last year and this year mm -hmm. and now we can't we don't have an inspection set up like mm -hmm. are you gonna let them get it pumped out now and then give them a grace period or like, i think i, I think to know right right doing. right um i i think we need to have part of that conversation with with uh uh colin or Andy um as to how that can be handled um you know, I don't see any problems with extending the period a little bit longer because, again, this no one could have predicted this. And 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 thanks to Alan, you know, Alan Alan did the best job that he could, but there's just not people out there wanting to do this. So uh, until the ordinance is revised and we have the, all the certification information and the insurance information from the pumpers, we don't have a choice. So yeah, yeah. The pumpers too. So what yeah. are you doing now? Yeah. So I just need to know what to tell people. Yeah. Basically to yeah. So, so for right now, we're on pause. We're waiting for, for a response from, from our solicitor. And um, I'm sure there's going to have to be a grace period, you know, whether it's, it's six months or even a year, I'm sure there's going to have to be a grace period. So, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't think it's unreasonable. How I, about I, you, Jim? I, I think you guys could uh, possibly use the existing form and if the homeowners are willing to have their pumpers complete the form, um, that would be that would be acceptable. Depending, you know, as long as they are completing it. Now that that turns into another issue, but in the short period, uh, that might be a solution. And again, I think you need to talk to legal about that. But right, right, right. okay. Thank you, Joe. All right, on to item number five, uh, Stonecroft Village Deed for open space lot number 215. Uh, this lot contains all the open space property in Stonecroft Village. Section number eight, which fronts William Penn Boulevard, has been conveyed to the Stonecroft HOA when it should have been conveyed and deeded to Marion Township. Attorney McFarland has spoken to Landmark about splitting the deed to correctly identify Marion Township as owner of that portion of lot number 215 and is still waiting to hear back from them. Did you have any further comments, Dan, on that? Okay. Uh, my first comment is that uh, we encourage the residents of Stonecroft Village to go on Marion Township's website and take a look at the township meetings, which uh, some of them are doing. So this subject was brought up to us uh, just a couple of days ago regarding this deed transfer to Marion Township. And our first question is, why does Marion Township feel that they need to own this property? I don't know, um, but I think it involves our right of way. Yeah, it, 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 it's probably something contractual, probably something, yeah, for the right of way. So other than that, I don't know. We'd have to ask Colin the specifics on that. And if indeed it is deeded to Marion Township, are you going to maintain it? Yes. Well, Which means you're well, going to mow it? Well, no, 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 no. The, only the right it's of only way. Only the right of way. No? Oh, we don't. 
But if we're the owner, <laughs> but we if need it to, belongs we need to ask for yeah. a check. But if it belongs to you, it's only the right of way. No, it won't belong to us. It still belongs to you. It's just the right of way. Should we ever need to to put a utility or something through there, right. the township has to have. I think it's only five feet. But you still have to maintain yeah. the area. That that's a standard legal right of way, which allows you so many feet from the center of the roadway into anyone's yeah. property, yeah. whether that's it's correct. Stone Crop Village yeah. or any other neighbor along yeah. that road. Yeah, I'm right. I'm not familiar with the size of the property, uh, the the specifics of it. We'd have to ask Colin. Yeah, I mean, this, this goes a little deeper than just the right of way. The right of way. Right, right. So, yeah, that's the reason I'm here today is to get clarification mm -hmm. of what your intentions are with this transfer of Stone Crawford Village property to Marion Township. Mm -hmm. No, but we'll get we'll get that question answered. You have any questions on that, Jim? He can't hear me. Sometimes there's a delay. No, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. You're good. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't think that. I think that this is just. It's just legal ease that we have access should we ever need it. But the property will still belong to us, Downcroft. Yeah. Like I, I, I miss Peter at this moment. He would just pull up a map and show us what it looks like, and you know, is this like yeah. a long, you know, we just, we yeah. just want to know who's yeah. going to maintain it. If yeah, you want it, you're going to yeah. maintain it. If we own it, yeah, yeah, we're going to maintain yeah. it. Yeah, we'll we'll ask Colin. Yeah, yeah, because we yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it's though, just right but... out there by the street. It's just a. Five, it's like you just said, Dan, it's from the middle of the street out. It might come over four or five feet yeah. into the property. Yeah, yeah it's but gonna, it has nothing it's to do with property the ownership. sidewalk, you know, which we've already just had totally replaced from yeah. one end of the development right. to the other. So, you know, if, if indeed Marion Township owns that sidewalk, I'm not going to pay to have the snow renewed from it. Well, 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 well that's, that's like a slippery slope. So, like, I have a sidewalk in front of my house. If it gets damaged, et cetera, I have to repair it. But at the same time, I'm also obligated under the law to clear the sidewalk from snow. It, 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 it's this kind of a multi, I don't say multi-purpose or there, there's, 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 but you competing, own it. right? But I own it, but there's competing interests. I have to maintain it. But if I don't, the township can come in and and clear it. That's correct. So, so, but at the same time, it, it, but it's deeded on your. Property. Yeah, yeah. So so we'll get clarification from Colin. Um, you know, to see what was the original intent, original purpose uh, when when the whole project started, as to what the deed currently says and what it, it's going to say, and and what the right. intentions are. So it, we have to get clarification from Colin. I mean, yeah. if you're looking yeah. for right away, that's right. Fine. That's that's one thing. Again, I'm not familiar with the size and the depth of of the, this particular area. So Peter's not here to do his computer magic for us. So, um, you know, if, if that right away also includes emergency vehicles, we understand right, that. Right. You know, that gives you the right way for uh, ambulances, fire trucks any other type of emergency vehicle service that needs to come into the development and you would have that right of way through that deed. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if you own it, you're gonna have to maintain it. We have to we have to get all that specifics from Colin. All right. We're not gonna own it, I'm sure. It's just the right of way to be if able it's to just the right of way. That's fine. Uh, I think that's that that, that that comes with. Can, yeah, I don't Colin think it, that. I don't think that needs to be that property needs to be transferred over to the township. Township has already has the legal right of way for 15 feet from the center of the road. Well, we'll we'll get Shane's out. But thank you, Zan. Okay, appreciate it. 
We do too. <laughs> it, too. It's our residents watching the videos well, and you. picking up on things and making phone calls to the HOA board asking questions. So you know your video conferencing is working very well. No, not a problem. Thank you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. All right. Uh, next. Yeah, you all, if I could bow out, uh, I'm going to log off. This is Joe. We'll see you guys in uh, a month, I guess, uh, unless you feel that we would need to be there on Thursday. Uh, okay. Thank you. Matt, thank you uh, for allowing me to participate. We'll see you all. Thank you. Take care, Joe. All right, next item is the emergency management coordinator report. Thank you so much, Dan. We'll talk to you soon. Um, the emergency management coordinator report, John was not able to submit us a uh, report for this month. He apologizes for that. Um, he does want us to update our burden, burning ordinance. This is something that he's reviewed. Uh, just as an aside, he's uh, trying to um, improve uh, relations with our local fire departments. And at some point, I believe he plans to attend one of their meetings to uh, just start a good conversation over what uh, their expectations are with service to Marion Township, as well as what our expectations are. Uh, and he's working hard to um, foster a good relationship with them. All right, next item is the Creekview Dairy Operations. That is 952 Route 419. They have made all of the necessary improvements and uh, submitted their NOT for the NPDES permit, which BCCD is still reviewing. Any comments there, Jim? No. I'm all right. Fine. Culverts and related site improvements on Marion Drive North, Sheridan Road, Marion Drive South, and paving and guide rail improvements on Reichert Road. The bid was uh, awarded to Construction Masters Services there's a pre-construction meet. Oh, excuse me. There was a pre-construction meeting which was held on July 21st, 2023, yesterday. yesterday. Okay, excellent. Wow, it's going to be exciting. And um, we have the adequate signage for road closings and stuff that now. Was all yesterday. Yep, yeah. wonderful. And I'm saying we physically have the signs here and stuff. Uh, they're going to. They're going to uh, provide them. Yeah, yeah, because oh, was signed yeah, out yesterday. Yeah, because we we made a purchase though, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, but they need more than just what we have so they're okay, good good i think that good. was part of the bid too maybe i don't know if they're going to provide that thank you thank you all right uh, uh, they're going to start with uh um Mary north and uh and when they have that done then they're going to pave both those roads at because one time close together. okay okay excellent excellent all right we're moving forward with that that's great um Next item is the temporary construction easement and permanent drainage easement for culvert replacements. Uh, Engineer Hess was going to contact the property owners. Thank you. We talked about that yesterday. Okay. Yes. Sort of got that. Okay. We need to make a few phone calls to property owners. Okay. Already. Thank you so much. And, 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 and Chuck is, is just wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, next item is Bollinger Road. The fill overflow matter. Uh, Jason Rickards was pleased with efforts of both townships uh, to restore the property and the restoration plan submission deadline is August 6th of 2023. Um, I just happened to drive down that road and it looks fantastic, which looks really great. You guys did a great um, job. Um, the next item is still Bollinger Road, the fill overflow agreements. We're still waiting for the property owners to sign the agreements, but uh, everyone did a really nice job in cleaning that up. All right. Am I going too fast? Okay. Forgive me. <laughs> yeah, there's not, there's not, but which I'm happy about. Um, the next item is extending the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. Uh, Engineer Hess estimates the construction cost to be about 22,000 and he's going to contact our PennDOT rep and UGI. And so if that goes through, then we could use liquid fuels for that, which would be great. Um, the next item is line painting, zones five and six, which is uh, approximately seven miles needs to be painted. Uh, Peter was going to call for quotes. Um, we had a wonderful time with A1 last year. I made half a dozen phone calls. Bush made half a dozen phone calls. Kelly made phone calls. I think everyone made phone calls. My son didn't make any phone calls, so we're going to make phone calls. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, I gave Peter uh, a name. We think they're from Robisonia. Okay. And uh, and uh, uh, Jackson Township uses 
them and uh and they're well pleased with the job they do and uh and uh he uh tim the jackson township guy told me uh they're a family operating company so okay. that's great that's great yeah we need to have someone a little bit more reliable and and it's just i think it's just been an issue with every company since covid it's hard to hang on to people and uh, a lot of people have left certain businesses so yeah covid changed everything so all right um the next item i think is kind of dead in the water um uh, the building of property renovations and demolitions we're just taking a different route with this at this point um i guess i had a misconception over how things should proceed and now we're just taking uh, Chuck's recommendation and we're gonna go with speaking to an architect and um, getting uh, a design from an architect and uh, proceed forward through there. Because once we have a firm design, uh, then we could proceed with grants and other sources of funding and move forward on that. So um, yeah, yeah. I still have some information on my phone from a salvage company, someone who may just be interested in the wood and the trim within the building. So I, I, are there any particulars we have to worry about that? If someone's going to to sound gruesome in a weird way, harvest the materials from the building, do we have to go through any kind of a process for that? Yeah. That would be interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I'll contact that guy. I had held off on doing so because I had a, a number of issues that sidetracked me. I'll have him come down here, take a look and see if he's interested in harvesting some of the materials, um, give us like a ballpark idea and then go from there because we're, we're hands down, we want to essentially recreate the history room and the alumni room in a new building. And we want to have some elements, whether we could salvage some of the brick to recreate some of an exterior wall or uh, my idea would be have it on the inside of the building because it's not feasible to have it on the outside. Um, and just recreate a lot of the elements that were particular to this building. And in some ways that a lot of community residents never got to enjoy so that we have a little historical center within the town that people can reflect upon it and, and join and, and really, really enjoy it. So, yeah. All right, so the next item is the proposed new building. Susan, Sue left a message with Olson Design Group to schedule a meeting and, and that's on August 10th. And they're going to be coming here, correct? All right, we'll have ACs at full blast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That room actually gets nice and cold if you have the fan going and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, well, well. Sue told me a trick. You have to pick the shade up over the air conditioner. <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so hot. I'm like, why is it so hot in here? She goes, Irene. She just pulls the shade up over the AC. <laughs> yeah, but with the fan going, it helps. Details. Yeah, details. <laughs> yeah, I, I have to actually had to increase the temperature I got so cold the other day so all right uh, so so that's where how we're moving forward and I guess just as an aside um I think we might actually have some options if or when construction I'm crossing my fingers would start there's so there's more houses for sale in town like here and there they pop up so like for temporary office space we might be able to purchase out again it's a question for Colin or they, there's always those um those portable offices, the trailers, yeah. I think um, our records, we would just be able to put in a storage trailer. Does anything particularly need um, temperature control that we have? It's not controlled up there. Yeah, yeah, so, so I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't find, to, and, and at that time, Jim, this is something what we're gonna have to, I think we could probably start on is, is reviewing some old materials that can be, yeah. So way back when yeah right we could shred it as long as we have a resolution to do so so i think we could we could probably even start a clean out process when um you ladies feel comfortable with that we could start designating materials i can help um and and this way once we we have like a large sum we could either hire a service or bring it to some place where it could be destroyed properly at one point so um but uh yeah i mean there's lots of options and i think uh I, I really appreciate Chuck's input on this because this is something that just we've never done. I've only built my own homes, never municipal building. And again, we want what's best for the community. We want something that's going to last a very long time and, and meet the needs of the community now and well into the future. And something that's something as simple, um, John was telling me uh, some of the 
programs that he's been attending, they put their electrical and uh, wiring for their computer systems in the floor and have in specific areas and have these planks that can be lifted up. So if there's an upgrade, you just lift that up. You're not tearing yeah. apart. Yeah. I know you're not tearing apart ceilings and you're just picking it up. And yeah, kind of reminds me like of a ship or something. So you can upgrade things with new tech without destroying your building. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, next item for discussion is the Comcast franchise renewal. Uh, oh, thank you, ladies. You updated the list of addresses to Phil Fraga. Um, we'll need to authorize Attorney McFarland to advertise a public hearing to adopt the Comcast franchise agreement renewal after we get the draft agreement from so Phil. Peter wanted to renew the draft, the new draft agreement for yeah. We advertise the public hearing to adopt. Did we get anything? No. Okay. He I wanted the list yeah. first. Mm -hmm. So he's on yeah. vacation. Phil's on vacation. So he's no, that's he fine. back. He'll review it. Yeah, absolutely. I want to review that too before. Yeah, that, that that's it's an interesting thing with the Comcast mm -hmm. agreement. Not to get into the nitty gritty mm -hmm. of it, but um, missing out on money is is not cool. So I, you know, I'm glad we have Phil in our corner, and that's a ten year agreement. So. All right, next item is the Westernbergs Joning Western <laughs> combining work. Sorry. Uh, Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Section 403 Amendments. And this is for the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Other municipalities are interested in participating. Have you had any updates any, on that? Nothing. They were right. supposed to be in July, but I don't I was not notified. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next item is the stormwater maintenance ordinance and fees update. Anything further on that? No. Okay. Should I take it off? I mean, um, I, I think it's still something that we need to yeah. table and that impacts our uh, ordinance also, doesn't it? And you have to change our yeah. ordinance. Yeah. Or amend our ordinance. Yes. Yeah. I, I, the, fees, the fees are not. The fee schedule is very confusing. Yes. And I don't believe the fees cover our costs, but I yes. would swear to that. Yes. And and uh, that was part of that big Excel spreadsheet that I had created at one point. So that needs, we need to discuss it. It needs to be discussed. I think probably August um, workshop meeting would probably be best. Mm -hmm. um, and um uh, I'd like both, you know, Jim and Peter, if you both can be here, that would be ideal. Uh, we need input, obviously, from, from Chuck, too, don't we? Yeah, yeah. on that. Yeah. So um, do we have something that Chuck can take a look at? Well, he has. He has it. He has it. He has, he has, it. has, the fee has he made any recommendations? I only, somebody has a stormwater plan that they submit an application for. I asked Chuck what I need to charge because I don't understand okay. the fee schedule. Okay. Like, okay. It has like different inspections on it. I don't. How, okay. I don't know how many inspections it needs. How do I okay. know? So I'll make a note to get recommendations from Chuck. Yeah, I, he wanted to update it to that small project thing or something. I don't know what it's yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I remember he had an yeah. extensive conversation. Because it would be more like a flat fee for the small projects, I think he mentioned. Something like that, yeah. Okay. You can ask okay. him Thursday. Night. Yeah. Okay, and this way we can move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I got you. Hang on just a, a, like one more minute. So, okay. Um, su supervisor's comments. Uh, uh, Peter's not here. Um, we'd like to express our condolences towards Peter. Um, and uh, we're sorry that he couldn't be here. Um, I'm going to... Uh, Butch has a, a, a couple of requests, if you go ahead. Uh, are we going to do something about uh, who more this year? Okay. And so, um, Jim, uh, uh, Butch a couple of times has come across some boom mowers that have uh, been for sale. Unfortunately, it usually occurs in between meetings, and, and he feels we've missed out on some good deals. Um, we're going to have to have... Uh, Peter, again, I'm not really that familiar with purchasing equipment. <laughs> right, right, right. Right, right, $60,000. But um, there's always financing available, things like that. So um, as long, I, I'd like you to get us the quote, get us something in writing. Um, and this way we could kind of 
we could do what we've done before, like have something pending based on financing and understanding what the total cost or monthly cost would be to us. So if it's like a five-year purchase, what's the monthly cost going to be? This way we could see how it fits within our budget because unfortunately we have the culverts, we have the sewer project, we have everything that's blowing up in our faces right now. So I need a, I need a number and that, that's what's going to be helpful. But we want to get you that boom mower. We want you to be able to get out there uh, to get the job done, but I need numbers. And so, um, you know, Jim, you know, he's looking at something between 60 to $70,000. It's something that certainly can be financed. So the cost of it can be spread over time. Um, but we need numbers, you know, we, we want, we want to do this, but we need the numbers. So, um, and then yeah, I agree. We can, we can always, yeah, we can always try and find the money. Yeah. If we just know what it's going to cost. Yeah. And when well, these used ones come up, I, I understand the problem. If, if it's happening between meetings, maybe we can even make a motion that uh, somehow, well, let's talk with Colin, but maybe there's a motion that can be made that we can authorize a purchase right. up to a certain amount uh, if it happens to fall be, fall in our laps between meetings. Right. And, I don't and know. that's, yeah. Uh, don't the township uh, uh, have. Uh, access to to a loan uh you know like with farm credit or, or we most most places have like like you know most places have their own loan programs so it would just it's a matter of filling out a credit application and that that's not an issue for us right. um I, have we ever been to credit loan? i mean not that well, I'm we might be of, able we may yeah. even, we may even be able to get someone to give us authorization like you know whenever you're buying a home you get pre-authorization that that you're uh, that you're approved we may be able to get somebody to yeah, do that yeah no no that, that's, that's not even an issue because i know i've spoken to individuals at fulton bank before everyone's going to throw money at us it's just a matter of how much the financing is so right. so that's not even right. an issue the, the issue is is that these these um mowers keep on coming up in between meetings and just like you said perhaps it's time to say okay we will authorize the purchase of up to a certain amount of, of money uh, for this particular um, piece of equipment. But at the same time, we just need Butch. We need you to get us a piece of paper or something in writing that's, that's a, a firm offer um, of a uh, piece of equipment. So uh, we need a hand, uh, not necessarily, we need a written quote from someone who's authorized to sell it to us so that we know it's legit. Because, uh, right. Uh, if, if they're there yet, uh, I have a, I mean, he just told me the quote, a quote over the phone. Right. And, yeah. And, uh, 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 if they have them yet, I can, uh, he offered me a 64, 15. Get us, get us and, something in writing and, and find uh, out about financing. Get me all the information, get it on a piece of paper, and we could certainly bring it up at Thursday night's meeting. We could add that to please. Absolutely. Yeah. The, yeah. Guy, yeah. the guy even said he's going to send me some information, but I didn't get anything. That's yet. okay. You could, give him, <laughs> you could give him the township's email. Yeah. Yeah. We even get facts still. Yeah. 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 So absolutely, it, it just wandered me uh, because yeah. uh, I'm I'm I call these fellas and they have them, but do 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 we have a meeting? Right, right. Just just <laughs> get, going. right. Just just get it in writing. We need a written a written yeah. quote. So we 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 want to help you absolutely. I guess on the same uh, vein, Butch has also expressed um, we need help as far as uh, road crew goes. Um, we do have an aging population here, and I think maybe it's time that we actually post things on Indeed. Um, and uh, so, Butch, if you could give us some idea over what uh, the requirements would be for road crew. Again, understanding it's only part-time, there's no benefits. It's really rather just seasonal work, um, but that's something that we would put on Indeed. Um, we would like if someone had a CDL, that would be easier with some of the equipment that we have. Uh, but that's something I think I'd like to at least consider, if not actually do, because it didn't cost us anything to post on Indeed, did it? Yeah, to, to post on Indeed a short job description for someone for uh, road crew. So that would be absolutely um, wonderful to do. And I would hope for a response. Um, yeah, yeah. 
um, because there's not a requirement to live within the township. And this way, if we have someone on board, we could have someone come in and work with Butch and Butch can say, hey, this is what our needs are. This is what we do. And, you know, God bless Butch. You know, he's out there all the time doing stuff and um, he needs help. He really does. So. Um, and Butch, if you run into a really good deal on a piece of equipment, get something in writing. We can always have a special meeting to approve it. Yeah. We have to advertise a special meeting. Yeah, we have to advertise. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how's that? Yeah. that only takes a week, doesn't it? Yeah. If you get us something before Thursday, if you can. Yeah. All right. Um, I don't think I really have anything further other than to again say thank you to Sue and Melissa for braving all these phone calls this past week. Uh, and yeah. Generally been nice. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 upset, yeah. but yeah. And thank you, thank you so much for everything that you guys do every single day to keep this place together. So yeah, yeah. Thank you, Kimberly, too, for all the work that you guys are doing. I, I don't know what we would have done without you guys. I mean, you, you're making it so much easier for us. I'm sorry we were a problem child, but, uh, but, 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 but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's tackling a difficult problem. And, and we really appreciate the guidance and, and the professionalism you guys have provided to us and, and really taking a lot of the heartache out of dealing with uh, the DEP and other other agencies, so we really appreciate it. So, um, Jim, do you have any comments? Say, I just same thing that you just said. You know, really appreciate what everybody's doing. Uh, we're having some some definite issues right now, and we're getting through it. And thank you to Sue and Melissa and Butch and the rest of the crew for doing a great job. All right. Together. Sue, do you have any comments? Not really. Melissa? Oh, and, and if it's okay, I, I'm happy in a weird way to say Melissa's going to stay with us a couple more months. Um, and, and, yeah, huge, wonderful addition to the office. Um, I, I, it's just, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's just, there's just always so much work to do here, and, and I don't think people, I don't think people realize it, and so, yeah, and it, it's, it's a it's, yeah. That's great news. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I've mixed emotions like a mom, you know, like I want her to <laughs> want her to continue with her education, but I'm a weird way I'm selfish that I'm happy I get to see her all the time and work with her and, and she's just wonderful and, and just a great addition to, to helping us out and, and helping us move forward. I think that's the biggest thing. I, I, I feel like we have such a great group of people working with us and, and we're moving forward and we, and I just want to keep the vibe going and, and keep it moving forward. So it, is there anything further? Okay. I'll call the meeting to an adjournment at uh, 947. So you're making a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 947. Second. Second. Roll call. Peter. Absent. absent. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Have a good weekend, everyone. Thank you. you too, Jim.